Welcome back, guys. Um, we are continuing from um, where we stopped the last time in the genetic course, and today we are going to be talking about heredity and variation. So, um, we're going to go to the past and visit a man called Gregor Mendel, who was an Austrian monk, stroke scientist, stroke botanist. So, he decided to conduct a couple of experiments on the pea plant and in 1865 he released the results and when he conducted crosses on different pea plants with different traits the traits include the shape of the seed the color of the seed the shape of the flower color of the flower and the stem the structure of the stem through all these results he was able to come down with three different laws the first one was the law of segregation the second was the law of independent assortment and the third was the law of dominance and these experiments took him eight years and um, he grew over 10,000 pea plants and kept track of them every single plant that was quite meticulous he, it's also um, of note that the monks bond all his results and if not for the fact that he kept personal records, we would not have these laws. So we we'll go to the first law, the law of segregation. Simply, we need to know that, um, like I said in the first class, each parent gives you one chromosome. So this chromosome comes together and form what you call the homologous chromosomes or the homologous, the homologous pairs of chromosomes, meaning that for chromosome one in your body you have one chromosome from your mother and one from for your father and this two work together to form your genetic makeup for chromosome one and this repeats chromosome two on to chromosome 22 before you have the sex chromosomes and the law of segregation says a diploid individual possesses a pair of alleles for any particular trait and each parent passes one of these randomly to the offspring so, like I said, we know what a chromosome is. We know that within the chromosome is the DNA, and within the DNA is the gene, and a gene can have different forms, which form the alleles. So, each allele, each genotype has two alleles, and each allele is donated by a parent. So, that means that for the gene that goes for hair color, you have two alleles, one from your father and one from your mother. So this takes us to the second law, which is the law of independent assortment. Ah, this is where it gets interesting. So this says that the alleles of two or more different genes are, get sorted into garments independently of one another. In other words, the allele a garment receives for one gene does not, independ does not influence the allele received for another gene. So what is, what is all this English? saying it's saying that in the chromosome you have thousands of genes hundreds of genes mm -hmm. and each of these genes gets assorted independently of each other that is gene one and gene two are the way they are inherited are separate that is during a process called meiosis if you remember from cellular biology we have two forms of cell divisions the mitotic cell division and the meiotic cell division meiosis occurs within sex cells that is the sperm cells and the egg cells so in this case because of their structure the sperm cells and egg cells are different from other cells because unlike other cells that have pairs of chromosomes they possess single chromosomes meaning that you have to split every single gene in your body into one for your sex cells and this splitting the way these genes get assorted through the meiotic process occur independent of each other that is one gene does not affect the other gene and from this picture this picture shows you a very good example so for instance you have um uh, we have the two seeds that were crossed with each other 
you have um, the seed that is um, yellow and round and the other seed is green and wrinkled. And when they were crossed, they gave back to the first generation, which were just yellow and round. Why? Because of the dominance. Like I explained to you before, a dominant gene will always be expressed. So in this case, the green and the wrinkled are recessive, while the yellow and round are dominant. So when this gene, when this seed were crossed with each other, that is, the results of this, the first crossing were crossed with each other, you now have 16 different offspring with about nine different phenotypes. You have some that were yellow and round, some that were yellow and wrinkled, some that were green and round, some that were green and wrinkled. You have different phenotypes. And what does, what, does, what does this simply tell you? It tells you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the parent holds or what the child holds. Whatever gene will randomly get sorted into gametes. And that is where we have the law of independent assortment. And then we go to the last law, which is the law of dominance. And what does the law of dominance tell us? It simply tells us that when two alleles of an inherited pair is heterozygous, then the allele that is expressed is dominant, whereas the allele that is not expressed is res recessive. And a dominant trait will always be expressed. It's simple. If an allele is dominant, it will always be expressed, no matter what. So, for instance, if you have a gene for height, that is, one, gene, one allele codes for tallness, the other codes, codes for shortness. When a tall person marries a short person, the children will, at least, if not all, some, most of the children will come out tall. Why? Because of the law of dominance. And that's it. That is everything, that is um, the sum total of what Mendel worked on. So I want you to go to the internet, I want you to Google search Mendelian experiments and uh, so that you have an idea of everything Mendel did and to give you a clearer picture of what I've been talking about for the past few minutes. And um, going to the next class, we'll be talking about what chromosomes are into details. Thank you, see you soon.